All right, welcome to this lesson. This lesson is an introduction to derivatives. And derivatives are a core concept in the study of calculus, and arguably they are the core concept in the study of calculus. So this is a really pivotal lesson for our course. Now, you may have heard the language, um, if you've taken calculus before, if you've had some exposure, you may have heard the language that a derivative is a rate of change. And that's a perfectly fine interpretation of a derivative. Um, but in this course, we're going to use a slightly different or maybe a slightly broader interpretation of a derivative. And I want to go ahead and tell you what that is. So we'll define a derivative as something that measures how sensitive a dependent variable is to small changes in an independent variable. Or in different language, a derivative measures how sensitive an output variable is to small changes in an input variable. And more specifically, it's the ratio of the output change to the input change. And in a few slides, I'll start giving you examples, very concrete examples of this. But let me try to make the concept very clear um, right now with a very simple numerical example. So what I would like for you to imagine um, is that you have some function f. And suppose we choose a value for the input variable. Okay, suppose we choose the value 3.1. And the value of the output variable that the function spits out, something like 7.05. And then what you do is you change the value of the input variable a little bit. So here's f again, but instead of plugging in 3.1, um, you plug in 3.12. Uh, and let's say that the value you get out of the output variable is a 7.05. Nine. Then the derivative is approximately equal to the change in the output variable, which would be 7.09 minus 7.05, so it went up by 0 0.04, divided by the change in the input variable. That's 3.12 divided by 3.1, that's 0 0.02, so that ratio happens to equal 2. So here we would say that the derivative is approximately equal to 2. This sign means approximately equal to, in case you're not familiar with it. Now, why is this only approximate? Well, perhaps if I had chosen a different small change in the input variable, I would have gotten a different answer for the derivative. You know, maybe if I had chosen to go up to only 3.15, uh, sorry, 3.115 instead of 3.12, I would have gotten a slightly different answer. So this is, this is an approximation of a derivative. And later in this course, you'll learn some ways to calculate a derivative exactly in a more precise fashion if you happen to have a formula for your function. Um, but this core idea of how to approximate a derivative just from the data of a function is really, really important. All right, so here's our first sort of applied example of a derivative, and it's that marginal cost is a derivative. So this is an example from economics. Suppose a company, a company manufactures cars uh, and we describe this mathematically so that the input variable is Q, the quantity of cars produced, and the output variable is C, which is the cost of production. And we suppose that currently we're producing 2.6 million cars, and the cost of doing that is uh, $30 million. Okay, I've completely made up these numbers. Well, marginal cost means the cost of producing one additional unit. And I want to show you that this is a derivative, okay? So imagine now that producing three cars past 2.6 million costs an additional $36,000. So what we did is we started where we had been at 2.6 million and we changed the input variable a little bit. We increased it by three. And we saw that the output variable increased by 36,000. So marginal cost is defined as the change in that output variable, right? The change in the cost divided by the change in the input variable of three cars. And so that turns out to be $12,000 per car, right? So by taking a ratio, we sort of reduce the denominator down to one car. So we're estimating that to produce one additional car costs $12,000, okay? To say it one more time, at a production level of 2.6 million, when we increase the input variable by one car, the output variable increases by 12,000, and we write this as a derivative. dc dq equals 12,000 at the level q equals 2.6 million. Here are a few general points about derivatives, and we're going to start out with notation. So for f of x, 
Um, there are different ways to write the derivative. One way we'll write it is as df dx, and another way we'll sometimes write this is as f prime of x. These mean the same thing. We'll use them interchangeably. And you should think of the d as meaning a little change in. So when you see df dx, think of this as meaning a little change in x produces a little change in f, and we take the ratio of those things, and that's the derivative. Now, if the value of that derivative is positive, it means that when you increase x a little bit, f increased too, right? And a positive number divided by a positive number is positive. So when the derivative is positive, this means that um, your function increases as you, cause, as you cause x to increase. On the other hand, if the derivative turns out to be negative, then it means that as you increase x, f decreases, right? So your change in f is negative, your change in x is positive, the overall ratio is negative, okay? So negative derivative means increasing x causes f to decrease. And this is oftentimes confusing for students, but the thing that you should always imagine doing is increasing the independent variable. You always increase the input variable, and you ask, does the output variable increase or decrease? If it increases, then we say f is increasing. If it decreases, then we say f is decreasing. Okay, and finally, units are really important because they give us good intuition about the derivative. You might remember that in our last example, um, we said something like uh, increasing the production by three cars caused the cost of production to go up by $36,000, and so the marginal cost was estimated as $12,000 per car, right? The units were dollars per car, and that's the units of F, divided by the units of x, right? Or the units of the output variable divided by the units of the input variable. Those are always the units of the derivative. Units of output divided by units of input. And that's really helpful, right? Dollars per car, we can understand what that means. $12,000 per car for each additional car we produce. Let's do another example, and this is another really important application of the derivative, and it's that velocity is the derivative of position. So imagine we have a ball and we throw it up in the air, and its position above ground is given by some function x of t, where x is measured in meters and time in seconds. So at any time uh, in seconds, the ball is x meters above ground. And an observer takes a movie of this experiment, and from estimating from the movie, they're able to write down this table of data. Okay. And we would like to ask, what is the velocity of the ball at time equals 0.5 seconds? And what we're going to do is, again, change the input variable a little bit around that value of time equals 0.5 seconds and ask, what's the corresponding change in the output variable? So let's do that. First, we'll just define that if x of t is a position function, the definition of velocity is that it's the derivative of position. Okay, so we'll do our estimates. At time equals 0.5, we're going to change the input variable a little bit. And actually, the way we'll change it is we'll look a little bit later in time and a little bit earlier in time. Okay, so we're going to compare those two time points close to time equals 0.5, and we look at the corresponding change in the output variable. So we're comparing this value here and this value here, and our estimate for velocity, or our estimate for the derivative, is the change in the output variable divided by the change in the input variable. And if we plug in our numbers from the table, we get an estimate of 0.49 meters per second. So the units of velocity here are meters per second. Okay, since the value of the derivative is positive, um, that means that the position is increasing, right? The derivative, which is velocity being positive, means the original function, position, is increasing. And that's what we see in the table, right? The height of the ball over this range is, is going up. Okay, let me make a couple comments here. We estimated the derivative by looking a little bit to the right in the table and a little bit to the left, but we could have done it a different way, right? We could have taken these two values of time and estimated, uh, estimated a derivative from those, right? And we might have gotten a slightly different answer. Or we could have taken these two points and estimated a derivative from those, and we might have gotten even a slightly different answer still. And that's okay. These are all just estimates for the derivative. 
If we wanted to do another example, we could ask about the velocity at time equals 1.75. And we could do a similar calculation. Um, we could look a little bit later in time and a little bit earlier in time. Uh, and we could compute the change in the output variable divided by the change in the input variable. Plugging in numbers from our table, we'd find that the velocity, the derivative of position, is minus 0.74 meters per second. The negative sign tells you the function itself, the x function, is decreasing. And that's what we see in the table, right? The ball's coming down. The height above ground is, is decreasing. Now let's examine the same kind of problem, the same problem, um, but instead of using a table of numbers, suppose we just had a graph here, okay? And we're asking what is the uh, velocity at time equals 0.5 seconds. So the first thing we can do is just identify that point on the graph. That's right here, okay? This black dot represents uh, time equals 0.5. And for a single variable function, the derivative at a point is actually the slope of the tangent line to the graph at that point. And if you don't know what a tangent line is, it's just the line that goes through the point we're interested in, but doesn't touch the graph at any other point. So you imagine that it just sort of nicks the corner of the graph, right? Doesn't touch it anywhere except that, that black dot. Um, and so we would like to estimate what's the slope of that line. Um, that's a little hard to do from this graph. Maybe if we had it put down on graph paper, it would be a little bit easier. Um, but something else we can do to estimate is to just, again, choose nearby points and calculate the slope. So this, this new line is not a tangent line because it touches the graph at these two points. Um, but it's pretty close to the tangent line we had. And so what we might do is just sort of, um, you know, try to estimate the value of the function at these two points and estimate the value of the uh, input variable at those two points. And this turns out to be uh, something like 0.25, I'm going to estimate. And this is about 0.75, I'm going to estimate. Um, and the value up here is maybe something like 0.46. And the value here, it's halfway between 0.15 and 0.3, so maybe it's something like 0.22. So to estimate my derivative, it's always the same thing. Change in the output variable divided by change in the input variable and plugging in the values that we're estimating very roughly from the graph, this turns out to be 0.49 meters per second. Is this the exact value of the velocity, the exact value of the derivative of position? No, of course not. We're just doing our best to estimate from a graph. Now let's do the same problem yet another way, and you should now imagine that um, instead of being given a table of numbers, or instead of being given a graph, you're actually given a formula, which you can plug into for any time t, you can plug in and find out what was the position of the ball at that time. And we would like to estimate the velocity at 0.5 seconds, remembering that velocity is the derivative of position. And the strategy is that we'll consider the sensitivity, in other words, we'll estimate the derivative over smaller and smaller intervals containing our point we're interested in of 0.5 seconds, until the estimated value settles down. And if that's not clear, let's just put up some data and do it. So the first thing we'll do is we'll consider an interval that contains our point, right? We can go a little later in time and a little earlier in time. So we choose 0.75 and 0.25. And we can plug into our formula to find the value of the function at those two points. And we do x at the later time minus x at the earlier time divided by the difference in times, just like we've been doing. And if we do that, we get our estimate for the derivative, and it's 0.4889. Now we'd like to do the same thing, but over a slightly smaller interval, a tighter interval around our point. And this will give us a slightly better estimate for the derivative. So now we'll use 0.3 and 0.7. And if we estimate the derivative at that point, we get 0.4885. So it's changed a little bit. We take a tighter interval still, 0.4 and 0.6, and we get 0.4880. So it's changed a little bit again. Now we'll take a very tight interval, 0.49 and 0.51, and we find the estimate 0.4879, and we can take an even tighter interval still, 0.499 and 0.501. We estimate the derivative, and we again get 0.4879, and the thing to notice is that these two estimates are the same to four decimal places. They, of course, differ in other decimal places, 
um, but to the fourth decimal place, they're the same. Um, and so we have confidence in saying that the derivative dx dt, we could say, equals 0.4879 to four decimal places. Okay, so again, the strategy is to take smaller and smaller intervals until the value settles down. Students often ask me, well, how, how small an interval do you have to take? And my answer is always, it just depends on how many decimal places you would like to have as an accurate estimate uh, in your estimate of the derivative. So that's it for this lesson. I want you to ask yourself a few questions because I want to make sure you can do certain things. You should be able to explain how a derivative is a sensitivity. You should be able to estimate the derivative of a single variable function given a table of data. You should be able to do the same thing given a graph. And you should be able to do the same thing, again, still given a formula. You should also um, try to wrap your brain around a couple of important applications of the derivative. And one is marginal cost, so you'd like to be able to define how marginal cost is a derivative. And I'd also like for you to be able to state the relationship between position and velocity. All right, that's it for this lesson. Thanks for listening.